In this video, I'm going to be transferring the transfer function into the state space model in matrix form. To start with this, we first want to make some adjustments to our transfer function here in the top. The first step we're going to do is write this as y over u equals our transfer function. So this is going to allow us to create what's called a system model in an output equation. And we can do this by separating the top and the bottom sections of this transfer function. To do this, we want to rewrite the left side as y over x times x over u equals 4s squared plus 2s plus 7 times 1 over 6s squared plus 3s plus 4. So now we've effectively split up this y over u as our output equation on the left and our system model here on the right. So we can now split this up even more into two different categories. We can write this as y over x equals 4s squared plus 2s plus 7 and x over u equals 1 over 6 s squared plus 3s plus 4. And for each of these, we're going to be solving for y and u. This gives us y equals x times 4s squared plus 2s plus 7. And over here on the right, we have u equals x times 6s squared plus 3s plus 4. So when we take the inverse of plus at both sides, we get y equals 4x double dot plus 2x dot plus 7x and we get u equals 6x double dot plus 3x dot plus 4x. Earlier in your semester you might have covered s squared is always going to give you x double dot, s equals x dot, and if there's just an integer that just gives you an x. And you can see that reflected here with the x double dot, x dot, and just the regular x. We now have our output equation and our system model. Now what we need to do is we need to put this in matrix form. To do that, we're going to start with the system model over here on the right side and separate your highest order derivative. In this case, our highest order derivative is the x double dot. This will be the case for most of your transfer functions. Now if we separate the x double dot, we get one over six times the summation of negative 3x dot minus 4x plus u and this simplifies out to x double dot equals 1 half x dot minus 2 thirds x plus 1 over 6u. Okay now that we have the x double dot separated we need to get this into matrix form. So if you take a look at our equation here there are two states. There's x dot and regular x. Now this can be represented by z1 is equal to our x and z2 is going to be z1 dot which is equal to x dot. Now we're going to take the derivative of z1 and z2 and this gives us z1 dot equals x dot and z2 dot equals x double dot. And you'll notice that x double dot here is also reflected up in our equation which means that x double dot is equal to negative one half x dot minus two thirds x plus one over six u. So we need to get this in the form where there's only z's in our equation over here on the right side because the goal of our matrix is to have it in terms of z1 dot and z2 dot. If we change this around a little bit, we can see that x dot is equal to z2 as we said over here in this equation. So that means that z1 dot is really equal to z2. And same with this equation here. We have another x dot, and we have a standard x this time. So if we rewrite this just below, we get negative 1 half z2 minus 2 thirds, and we know that x is equal to z1, as shown over here in the left equation, plus 1 over 6 u. Now in this case, u is going to be our input for this equation. I'll rewrite these just below here so it's a little bit cleaner. So we have z1 dot equals z2, and z2 dot equals negative 1 half z2 minus 2 thirds z1 plus 1 over 6 u. Now we have to take these two equations and put them into matrix form. Well, how do we do that? 
Well, since we have our terms z1 dot and z2 dot here on the left, we have to write a matrix over here that is z1 and z2. And these terms don't have a dot on them, keep that in mind. So this gives us another matrix here that's going to be four terms. Now if you remember from your linear algebra class, when you multiply a matrix, you have this term times your top term here, this term times your bottom term, and the same goes for your bottom two equations. You'll get this bottom one here times the top, and this one here in the bottom right times your bottom section here. So let's start with filling out Z1. So you'll see up here, there's our Z1 dot equation, and you'll notice that there isn't actually a Z1 up here in this equation. So let's put a zero in for this section. There is a Z2 term in this section, which means we need a one here because the coefficient for Z2 is one. So if you really multiply this out, you'll get Z1 dot equals zero times Z1 plus one times Z2. And this equals Z2, which is our exact equation shown above. Let's fill out Z2 dot. So let's start by looking for our Z1 term. And this is shown right up here in our Z2 dot equation. And the coefficient for the Z1 term is negative 2 thirds. So we're going to put a negative 2 thirds down here. Our Z2 is a negative 1 half coefficient, which means we get a negative 1 half here. But you'll see that we have a 1 over 6 u. And this is our input for the function. So we have to write another 2 by 1 matrix multiplied by some input u. If we take another look at our z1 dot equation, there is no u term, which means we get a zero up here. And our z2 equation has one over six u, which means we get one over six down here in the bottom. So this is our system model in matrix form. However, we do still have our output equation that we need to model in matrix form. I went ahead and copied that down here so it's easier to see. Now to model this in matrix form, we need to convert this to be in terms of Z1 and Z2. To do this, we write Y equals 4. And since Z1 and Z2 don't individually represent X double dot, we have to take our equation up here that we found earlier for X double dot. I went ahead and just copied that down here so we can see it. So it's 4 times negative 1 half X dot minus 2 thirds X plus one over six u. And now we have the rest of our y equation up here. So that's plus two x dot plus seven x. Now if we distribute this four into the parentheses here, we get y equals negative two x dot minus eight thirds x plus two thirds u plus two x dot plus seven x and this is really what was in our parentheses just above. We can now combine our like terms with our x dot and our x, and this gives us an output equation of y equals zero x dot plus 13 thirds x plus two thirds u. Now we can see here that our x dot is just canceled out because that's a zero, and we need to sub in for our x here. Now if you'll remember above, x is really equal to z1, so this gives us an output equation of 13 thirds z1 plus 2 thirds u. And this is almost identical to doing the matrix that we did above. So we get y equals some matrix in here times z1 over z2 plus another matrix here times our input u. Now if we look above at our y equation, z1 has a 13 thirds coefficient z2 is 0 because there is no z2 present in our y equation and the u coefficient is equal to 2 thirds and that is the derivation of our state space model in matrix form using this system above